No, I always sanitize. Michelle, tell him how I sanitize everything. Guys, it's here. I think it's here. This will be really Stop embarrassing. This is not what I think it is. Step one. Sanitize the box. Oop, no, just kidding. They make it easy for you with like a little tab. Oh, wow. Oh my God, Apple's lit. Look at this. Look at this packaging. Keep doing it. Yeah. Okay, so I am very excited about this video because I ordered the new 2020 iPad Pro and I've been waiting for it for, this hasn't even been that long, it's been like a week and a half, but it feels like it's been a long time. I've just been waiting for it to arrive. So I thought that I could share my excitement with you guys and unbox my iPad and the accessories that I got for it. I actually didn't go crazy with the accessories. I really thought I would. I usually do with my Apple devices, whether it's like dongles, cases, um, sleeves, uh, screen protectors. I kind of, I have an issue when it comes to my Apple devices, but I try to keep it pretty minimal for my iPad. I'm sure in the future I will end up buying more accessories for it, but for now I just have a couple of accessories, um, just the essentials. Also, I didn't buy the Folio keyboard. Um, I know that you can get the Folio keyboard for this iPad. Um, and it is compatible, but I didn't get it because I am waiting for the new keyboard to come out in May. So I thought if I'm gonna end up buying that keyboard anyways, there's no point in me purchasing the Folio keyboard now. Plus I do use the Magic Keyboard for my um, like MacBook desktop setup. So I was thinking that if I really needed a keyboard, I have a Bluetooth Magic Keyboard already so I can use that. I guess let's start with the iPad, of course. It is gorgeous. I got the 256 gigabyte iPad Pro 11 inch. Um, just the Wi-Fi edition. I didn't buy the cellular because I, one, have data on my phone that I can use the hotspot and I feel like I rarely use my iPad um, when I'm, you know, out and about and needing cellular, so it just doesn't really make sense to spend that extra money. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Oh, can I also just say the fact that Apple now puts these tabs on um, their packaging is just amazing. And that whole box situation, like they really thought of it all. So yeah, I can't really expect anything less from them. Pretty much the reason I got it is obviously for creative purposes. I use my old iPad Pro, the first generation, mainly for um, like when I'm drawing things for videos, I do photo photo editing on it and um, some document work, but I really, really want to utilize this baby a little bit more for video editing, for photo editing, and for like creative um, purposes. So yeah, take this bad boy out. Ooh, it's so pretty. It feels so fragile. Oh my gosh. Um, I was just saying to both my sister and Joel earlier that I kind of wish I got the 12.9 inch, but I think I have like a week or something to return this if I really do decide that I want the bigger one. This just feels so tiny in my hands. I don't know. We'll see. We'll play around with it and see. So obviously it comes with the iPad and then you lift this guy up, has a USB-C cord, um, and then of course the stickers. <laughs> Sometimes I watch these unboxing videos and people ask, <laughs> always ask, who actually uses these stickers? Me. I actually use these stickers. I'm just going to put it on the box because I don't want to have it touch my, um, table. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and unwrap this beautiful device. 
So the accessories I got for it, obviously I got the uh, Apple Pencil. This is the one that is compatible. I also got this little um, case for it. This is just one that I purchased off Amazon. I usually don't splurge and get the Apple cases. I feel like uh, it's unnecessary. The ones that people sell on Amazon usually are pretty dang good. So this is just one that I got from Tomovo. But I'm not going to put that on just yet because I also purchased the paper light um, or Actually, I don't want to say it's paper like because I think there's a brand that's called paper like that makes these But this is not by them. This is by a different company. This is one that I just got off of Amazon But I think this is gonna make a huge difference in um, My experience with it because that was something I never used on my old iPad and something that I always noticed is that the I guess friction between my Apple Pencil and my screen always feels a little weird. Enjoy. Always feels a little weird, so yeah, I'm glad I am trying it out now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my paper like screen protector on it. I feel like I'm not somebody who's really good at putting um, screen protectors on so I'm a little bit scared that I'm gonna end up getting some like dust underneath but we'll see so remove screen dust with blue screen dust removal screen dust removal okay so they give you two so in case I do fuck one up at least I have the other one Oh, this is the dust removal sticker. Okay, great. I think we're getting into a weird area here. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I had to like get on my knees and use my whole body weight to do that, but it looks good. Just wipe that down. There's like this tiny little air bubble underneath there, so I'm just gonna do a little that motion. Ooh, I see one. That was pretty good, yo. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Let's peel this part off. Because that will bother me. Okay, so I've got the screen protector on. It does feel different than a regular matte screen protector. So that's good. I don't feel like I was ripped off for just a typical matte screen protector. It looks really good and it definitely feels quite different. It just feels like, mm, I want to say it feels like a thick matte screen protector. Yeah. Voila. That's what that looks like so far. I'm gonna put the case on, which is just one of those like magnetic back ones. So I think we're getting into a weird area. Just snaps on like that. Voila. So the problem with these obviously is that the sides are still exposed, which is actually why I um, have another sleeve on the way that I can put the like everything in, like my pencil my iPad, but until then, I'm just gonna have to be very careful with this one because that one still has, I think like about a week before it gets here. All right, I'm gonna open up my Apple Pencil as well. Yay, it's so gorgeous. So in this portion, I don't think they come with stickers, do they? No, they don't. All good. So yeah, just a typical instruction manuals and whatnot in the box. And then I have my little Apple Pencil. Definitely a lot better than the old iPads where you had to 
like literally plug it into the lightning cable slot. And this magnet is actually really strong. Um, I considered buying like a pencil holder, but I think this will actually be totally fine. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna turn it on for the first time. I think we're getting into a weird area here. All right, so the next portion of this video, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my workflow on the iPad and how I like it, but obviously I have to use it first. So I'm actually gonna check back with you guys in one week um, after I've kind of set it up the way I like. I'll show you all the apps that I have um, and what I know that and I know that the new iPad OS has a lot of really cool shortcuts and um, like workflow type changes. So I will go over all of my favorites with you, um, yeah, in a week. But since this is a video, it's gonna be literally the next frame. Okay, so we're not quite at the point where I wanna talk about the features and the rest of my accessories yet, but there is one accessory that I do want to talk about. I mentioned to you guys that I didn't get the Folio keyboard because I'm waiting for the um, new iPad keyboard to be coming out, which it should get delivered, I think like they said after or like the week of May 10th or something, which coincidentally is my birthday. My birthday's on May 9th, so it'll be a nice little addition <laughs> to my setup. But before that comes, um, I've actually been in contact with this company called ASIO. ASIO Corp makes absolutely beautiful, beautiful keyboard. A lot of the accounts that I follow on Instagram that feature really beautiful setups always has this keyboard um, in the setup, so I just really wanted to get my hands on it, play with it, um, and try it out for myself. And because I do use my Apple keyboard mainly for my like work setup, um, I decided to get the ASIO keyboard for my iPad setup. So the keyboard itself is a little thick. It is a mechanical keyboard. I actually did get the smaller version as well, so not the one with the number pad as well, but it is still quite a sizable a keyboard, I guess. It's not something necessarily super portable. It's not something that I would necessarily carry around to like the coffee shop, for example. The Apple Magic Keyboard is super slim and it's something that I can just tuck into um, even like the sleeve that my computer goes in. So that's really, really easy. Um, so I think the ASIO keyboard is better suited for like sitting at home on your workspace, being beautiful. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get my hands on it and try it. It's been amazing. So this arrived in a cardboard box and inside the cardboard box is this um, plastic sleeve around the actual product box. The product box itself was enough for me to be like, wow, like it was this gorgeous matte black box with gold or was it silver or gold embossed um, letters and yeah, it was just stunning. You open it up and the keyboard itself has its own plastic wrapping just to make sure no dust gets in it. Um, yeah, it just came in beautiful, perfect conditions. Inside the box underneath the keyboard, there is a little card package that has your guarantee card on it. It also comes with extra legs. So these legs actually slip on underneath the keyboard to give it a raised, um, I guess like raised back side so that it is angled for comfort. It also comes with its own drawstring sleeve if you do decide to take this traveling or if you're moving or if you're just moving this around you're taking it place to place. This is a great little storage bag for it to keep it safe. I picked out the RCK which is the Retro Compact Keyboard. This is not their original keyboard that they make. Like I said, the one that I think that they make originally is the full size keyboard with the number pad but I'm pretty used to using my Apple Smart Keyboard so I just don't really have a use for the number pad anymore so I got this one instead. It does come in four colorways on their website right now. There's one that is kind of like a walnut wood with um, space gray or like gunmetal gray trim. There is one that is black leather with rose gold trim. There is a white leather with rose gold trim. And then there's the one that I got which is black leather with uh, gunmetal trim. I just think it looks so sleek in the all dark 
um, version. They actually released a version specifically for this Japanese um, I, it's either just an online store or it's like a department store, but it is stunning. It's white leather with silver trim and oh my god, I love, love, love that colorway so much. But they do only sell that colorway um, online at that Japanese store. So I opted for the my second favorite option, which is the all dark option. I have read tons and tons and tons of reviews on this keyboard, and I just can't seem to find any bad reviews on it. It's beautifully made. The keys are so satisfying to click. All mechanical keyboards are pretty satisfying to type on, but it just, something about the round keys, the way that this specific um, mechanic for the this keyboard works, it just feels amazing. Not to mention when you're typing there and you're kind of like sitting close to your keyboard, you can smell the leather smell, which I feel like might, it's, it's very faint. It's not like super overpowering. Um, and it might not be everybody's favorite scent, but for me, that is a whole, <laughs> it's like a sensory experience. I love it. So anyways, back to the box. Um, it comes with a wrist pad, so the larger version actually doesn't come with the wrist pad, um, but the RCK does. You can buy the wrist pad separately if you need it, um, and yeah, I'm super glad that it came with the wrist pad because, um, because of how high the keys sit on this mechanical keyboard, it just feels a lot more comfortable with the wrist pad underneath your wrist. Otherwise, your hands are kind of angled a little bit in too high of a position and it does get a little bit tiring on your wrist, but with the wrist pad, it is perfect. Another thing that it comes with that's great is that it comes with an extra set of function keys. So this is for to distinguish between Mac users and Windows users. Usually when you buy a keyboard, you either look for a keyboard that's built for the Windows computer or you buy a keyboard that's built for the Mac computer. And you kind of get the best of both worlds with this keyboard because it gives you that extra set of keys so that if you do decide to switch operating systems at any point, you're good to go, you have those keys. I own both a PC and a MacBook. Not that I would necessarily use this keyboard for my PC, which is ma mainly used for gaming. Um, it's still nice just to have that option. And in case I do in the future want to set up a full PC setup in my room, then I think this keyboard would be a beautiful piece for that setup. The other two things that come in a box are the charging cord, which thank God it is a rechargeable keyboard. I can't stand products that still use like AA batteries. Um, yeah, rechargeable, perfect. And then it comes with this really cute little brush for you to actually clean the keyboard in case dust gets along, like under the keys and on the actual leather part of the keyboard. So the question that I think most people ask slash what I was also wondering myself when I was looking into the keyboard is what does the keyboard sound like? Because if you've ever heard of a mechanical like keyboard typing before, it is quite loud, it's very clacky, it just makes a very satisfying click sound and this definitely is no different, but I will say this has that extra oomph to it that really makes it feel like you're typing on a typewriter. And I think this is due to the specific mechanics that ASIO has built for these keyboards. Of course, I had to film a little ASMR and just let you guys listen to what the keyboards sound like, so here we go. So I have been using the keyboard for about a week now and I will say it was a little hard to get used to in the beginning because I don't personally own a mechanical keyboard. Um, even for my PC I just use one of those soft touch keyboards, um, kind of like the typical like keyboards that you get with a PC. I have this Corsair one um, and then obviously my Mac keyboard is that typical Mac, like super thin, um, super like flat keys. So initially typing on this, it was definitely a struggle. I felt like I couldn't type very fast on this keyboard just because of the extra like compression that I have to make finger to finger, letter to letter to like type. Um, I did do a speed test. I am usually at about like 103, 104 words per minute. And when I did the speed test, it was like 98 words per minute. So still pretty fast, but 
there were definitely more mistakes usually I get like maybe one mistake this time at 98 words per minute I had eight mistakes so yeah that's a, definitely something to consider is you will have to like unless you've been using mechanical keyboards your whole life this is something I had to get used to um, the other issue that I have that doesn't happen anymore but initially when I was typing with it is that I felt like my fingers would get tired after a while if I'm like typing ferociously on this keyboard like if I'm writing a document or you know writing a blog post or whatever um, I just felt like my fingers were pretty tired at the end of the day now I feel like my fingers are just trained and stronger and ready for this type of mechanical keyboard so I don't have any issue with that anymore um, but yeah just something to keep in mind if you are like me and you do typically just use like your MacBook keyboard or your Apple Magic keyboard because those are super super easy to type on and the keys are so flat and there's just like no room for mistake essentially all right that is enough about the asio keyboard for now if you guys want to see like a full review and just like more in-depth um, information about it there's tons of stuff on youtube but if you want to see you know my use of it let me know in the down bar and i'll try to film a like more complete review on the thing so it's been about a week and a half since i received my ipad and I wanted to just review every aspect that I showed you guys in the initial unboxing um, plus show you one more piece of accessory that arrived after the unboxing. Going into the actual device itself, I thought I would go through and talk about some of the apps that I really love using on my iPad. So starting on the first page, this is what my setup looks like. Um, starting on the first page, YNAB, this one here. I'm not going to tap it because it is a budgeting app and it has all of my financial data on there, but it is such a good app for um, budgeting and just for managing your finances. If you're somebody like me who used to really, really struggle with budgeting and financial planning, this is a great tool to keep you accountable and it has really, really worked for me. So I would highly recommend it. Duet is another app that is very interesting. I actually haven't tried Duet on the new iPad. Essentially what Duet does is that it mirrors or makes your iPad screen a um, extension to your Mac screen. So this is good for people who you know are in the creative industry and you need to have that extra space and um, you don't want to buy another monitor or it's great for those who um, work on like Illustrator or Photoshop or any tool like that and you want to be able to like use your pen to draw and all that, Duet allows you to do that. It's a very good app. I think it costs like $30 though. So do keep that in mind. I haven't even tried it on this iPad yet so I can't tell you whether it's um, better or not but I do know when it was on the old iPad there was definitely a leg. So do keep that in mind. Um, ah, good notes. I think, we're I think everybody loves good notes. I think everybody that I watch on YouTube that has the iPad Pro and use it for any sort of work, they all have good notes. It's either good notes or notability. Um, and I've used both and I purchased both. And I will tell you why I like good notes better. Although, okay, so I will say notability I do like better because it has that endless, um, scroll function so you can have your page just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling i don't know if you can do that within good notes um good notes i feel like mainly is page by page so this is one notebook that i have just talking about some design stuff um but i really love how many options of like covers and different papers and page notes um, it gives you and it, it just has so many editing functionality. There's so much goodness in good notes And yeah, I just have been really loving it. This is actually a travel journal that I um, Made it's just something I'm working on I'll link the youtuber who created this travel journal template below so you guys can get it as well but yeah, I just think it's such a good note system. Um, the writing portion of it, like the pen tool portion is very intuitive. I think overall the app is just very intuitive. You can have different settings for pen sizes um, and colors, just like as like a quick select. 
Obviously, this wouldn't be a iPad Pro video if I didn't mention Procreate. I'm sure if you own an iPad, um, you probably already use Procreate, but I use this to do like my little um, graphics for YouTube. Uh, this is something that I did for, I know it looks so crappy, but that's something that I did for Animal Crossing. I drew this little girl based on this other like girl's photo that I saw. So it just really lets you be so creative when you draw. It has like a lot of pen options, brush options. Um, it even lets you import different brushes. It just is such a heavy duty app. It's insane, but it doesn't take up that much space. Like it just works so beautifully. It never lags on me. Um, yeah, it's just really, really good. This is one of my favorite features of Procreate is that you can actually come in here and create a time lapse of your artwork that you had done. So I'm just gonna show you this one. So it will time lapse through and show you the process of you creating like whatever piece of art that you created, which I think is such a awesome function because one, while I'm being creative and just doodling or drawing or whatever, it also records the process or process for me. So it's like I can create a whole nother piece of content with that video. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just like the content creator in me talking, but I just love, love, love this function. And I've seen so many insanely beautiful like time-lapse replay videos created by artists and I, they're like some of the most satisfying videos to watch. So this is just a little plant doodle that I did. I based this off of another person's like plant um, illustration that I found on Pinterest. So yeah, that's what that looks like. So going into some of the shortcuts, there are a few new shortcuts on the iPad Pro that I've discovered that I really, really love. One is definitely their multitasking. So what you can do with the multitasking now, so okay, let me start over. So, like before, you're able to do a split screen. So, the different dimensions in split screen. But, of course, you're able to do the little like tab that um, kind of floats on top of your other window, which is useful for when I'm like writing documents and whatnot. And that's cool and all, but the new function of the little floating tab is that you can actually open something up let's say i go back to that and i open up my calendar app as my new floating tab so you can actually go through and flip through all your open mini tabs so this still functions let's like open something else so it's a good example so this still functions and you can still kind of um swipe up to choose what window you want to be on but they also have built that same window on that side like floating tab now so that you can do the same swipe up motion and tab through anything that you have open on the mini tabs and i think that is such a cool little shortcut you can still do like the swipe up and over it just works so smooth and i think that is such a useful new function that i'm super glad is built into the ios now another amazing thing about the new ipad is because it does have the usb-c port instead of the um what am i trying to say it has a usb-c port instead of the lightning keyboard port which means you're able to now plug in any hard drives that you have that have the usb-c um, connector or if you have like a dongle you can like a converter you can use that adapter and just plug in any hard drives which means you can actually have external um, memory for your iPad now. Something else awesome is that you're able to zip and unzip files straight from the file app of your iPad now which is another great functionality because before you would have to like unzip it on your MacBook and then send those files over to your iPad whereas now you do have that functionality added which is awesome. So before I end the video I wanted to show you that last piece of accessory that I um, was talking about but this I actually mentioned in the beginning of the video. So because the folio case doesn't protect the side of my iPad I wanted to get something that um, I can actually put this with the folio case in 
um, before I put put it in like my work bag, for example. So I bought this I faux here. leather um, like sleeve off Amazon. I think it was like again only fifteen or twenty dollars. It's by this brand called Cobble Pro, and by I believe this was created for the ten point nine inch iPad Pro, like the first generation that I have. But it actually fits the eleven inch. Um, iPad really beautifully and the best thing about it is that it actually fits it even with that little like folio case on. I know that folio case is quite thin so it doesn't make that much like additional bulk but yeah I'm just super glad that even with the folio case on it fits and I really really love that they come with this little Apple Pencil pocket like that because um, there is a chance of your Apple Pencil getting damaged when it's just clipped onto the side of your iPad Pro by the magnet. So I love that it comes with a separate case for it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the first time that I've really gone into depth and talked about something that isn't like beauty or fashion or like my job. But I am starting to branch out and I just want to include more of the things that I love and I think gadgets is something that I'm very 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 passionate about um, and I spent a lot of money on and time on so I thought I would share I hope you guys found this video helpful please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it um, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more videos like this where I talk about the gadgets what I use it for my favorite functions etc etc and yeah I think that's everything for today this is such a long video already um, I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video